Jupiter Broadcasting presents this program in stereo. This episode brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. This week on the Linux Action Show, we've got the only review of the Boxy Box that matters. Then we break down the Attachmate and Novell deal and discuss its future impact on Linux and your life. Plus so much more. All this week on the Linux Action Show! <laughs> and welcome to Linux Action Show, Season 14, Episode 7. My name is Brian. Hey, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Hi, guy. My name is Chris. Oh, is that what your name That's is? That's who I am. All right, I didn't know. And check this out, Brian. Yeah? This really awesome wicked fridge <laughs> runs Linux. Yeah? I threw you off for the whole rest of the you show did. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your your groove is gone, and I There's love no that. There's no groove. Yeah. That's all right. You know, you really, you just cannot. You can just turn this off right now. This <laughs> show is going to suck. Gonna be, yeah. It's not going to be, It's going to be terrible. It doesn't matter. We've got this page of stuff we're going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. It's all going to suck. Like, there's this stuff over here. Some Nobel, Nobel stuff. and Boxy yeah. and Ubuntu. Like, like yep. really massive news. But yeah. the way we're going to say it, you're going to be totally disinterested. <laughs> you're going to listen to it and you'll be like, what is this garbage? Yeah. I'm going to go uh, listen to the Linux Outlaws on, uh, on a European radio or whatever the heck they're on. I, I don't, don't even know. know. I don't even know. I tried. Yeah. I tried. Yeah. I, I don't know. Hey, I, check out this See fridge. that what I did right there? What? By starting the show off wrong, yeah, I tried to make up for it in karma points by giving a shout out to someone else, like in the Linux community. Uh, but I did it in such an insincere way, yeah. as to actually reduce my karma points. Right, so it's a net loss completely. It's a total net loss. All right, well, you can make up for it, Brian, because every time you buy a Linux fridge, an angel gets its wings, and that's great for karma. I really do want a Linux fridge. <laughs> it's pretty neat. So it's got a, a 400 megahertz oh, ARM man. processor in it, 128 megabytes of RAM, and then a 480 by 800 uh, touchscreen built into the glass panel of it where you can awesome. select different crap and things like that. I mean, it's not. They, they, I mean, come on. This thing's crazy. I'm sure it's super expensive. Dude. It's made by a company called iFinity. Is it running GNOME or KDE? No, it's some sort of custom UI that they have there. Uh, it's like LXDE or something. <laughs> LSD? No, I don't. L LXDE, oh, man. Oh, I thought you said LST. Dude, no, I don't think you're even <laughs> screwing up the Linux acronyms this show. We're, we're, we're done. You know um, what? Let's just talk about goats the whole rest that was, of the show. That was, That's that, no. what people want to hear. Uh, Linux composited, composited desktop. Wait. I like the chat room. Yeah. Dot whack dispense water dot sh. <laughs> Yeah, if you get root, then maybe you can overcrank your freezer and stuff like that. You know, it's the thing is, I I love old like retro appliances. Like yeah. my my stove is from the yeah. the the late nineteen forties, and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. My fridge, I love those old round top mm -hmm. fridges and everything. Mm -hmm. But if I wasn't gonna go retro, I'd mm -hmm. have to go futuristic Linux powered. Yeah, because like I don't know the non Linux powered fridges, they just make me sad. The ones right? that are like Windows powered, you know, you they're just in that. between. They're in between yeah, technologies. It's no good. It's, it's no good. Yep. It's it's transitionary. Now, you want uh, a Linux powered fridge. One knock against this unit is I believe you, you're not able to load uh, your photos on it over the wireless network. You'll have to use its built in USB port to get new photos on there for the photo slideshow. The built into your fridge. <laughs> That's a great Reds Linux. I had to talk about that one on the show. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And the UI looks pretty nice. We do have. It's like all soothing looking and I blue. It makes me think that the fridge is cold on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it seems very peaceful. And I like that it has the uh, clock on there and the time and all, or the temperature and all that. I, kind of stuff. I know. I have to ask. Is it running Xorg or is it running Wayland at this point? You know, I would bet Wayland because this is a future-based device. <laughs> Man, there has been so much stuff going on. You know, so I like far, to think that the most cutting-edge distro of Linux is actually only well, for fridges. I, you know, yeah. you just don't see Xorg having a long life uh, ten years down it's the road. It's Wayland right? and Compass. Yeah, you, you, think you know, so. and there's 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 a whole lot of uh, you know those sorts of things. Who knows? I mean, I don't. You know, last, it's G Streamer for all the video playback. La last sure. episode, uh, you know, I talked about. Um, the uh, what, free NX, free NX uh, remote desktop. Yeah. And during the show, I brought up a free NX session to a to a system in Texas. You did as a demo. Yeah. Well, then we shot the that was on that was on my second virtual desktop. Sure. And then I switched back to virtual desktop one, and we just kept doing the show, and we just ended the show, and we got up out of the studio, and we left. Well, I came down. Uh, 
boy, what was it? So that was on Sunday. I came back down here later, maybe Wednesday in the week, something like that, Thursday in the week. I forget what it was. It was Wednesday. I flipped over to that second virtual desktop, and that connection was still open with everything that I had still running in it. I mean, that that is how rock solid that NX That's technology awesome. is. is. That, that is pretty stayed awesome. up after all of that. So That's it, power. It's a little call out. Hey, you know what? Hey. Speaking of call hey, outs, Brian. Hey. GoDaddy.com yeah. has websites. Dude, total what tons of websites. Servers. Domain names. Um uh, what else they got? I think they got Danica back. Oh, thank gosh. <laughs> thank thank the goshness. Yeah. Hi there, Danica. Go ahead and zoom on in. Hi, Danica Patrick. Our uh, I'm GoDaddy park right girl. Here while you talk oh, about hi. GoDaddy. Hi, Danica. Hi, Danica. You're better than the other you, one. You know, Brian, I believe that... Uh, I don't know what I want to talk about anymore because Danica's back. Well, Dan- Danica was telling me that GoDaddy has uh, everything we need to buy dot .coms, dot Go- dot .org. GoDaddy is great yeah. because they've got Danica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Danica Patrick really wants you to type Linux when you check out and save 10%. She thinks you're extra, extra cool and dreamy if you type in Linux 2.0 and get 20% off your Linux-based shared hosting. That's... That's Danica Patrick's that's way. That's not bad. That's, that's what gets her, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. I do know what you're saying. And you know, Brian. Yeah. GoDaddy.com. We, we don't often mention it, but we actually have, um, let's see, we have four servers that support the Jupiter Broadcasting site yep. and all of the related content that run on GoDaddy's hosting system. So if you use the code Linux20, you'll save 20% off of hosting. And I, out of all of the hosting we use... They are just based, they are never down. They're rock solid. And we have, <gasps> excuse Chris, <laughs> we have hosting that we pay so much more for. Class. And there we have had hours and hours of outages. So it just, you know, it makes you realize that sometimes people have a system worked down as a product that they can ship and sell, and they have it so dialed in and so refined Dude, that it just works. They've got it down pat. I, mm-hmm. Like, there's a couple of places I just feel comfortable hosting. Like, uh, you know, Amazon does good hosting. Yeah, yeah. GoDaddy does yeah. good hosting. And those are like my two go-tos right now yep. of like, you know what? If I just want it to be totally Rock up solid. Time, I mean, yeah. they advertise 99.9% yep. uptime, but yep. honestly... I, I don't know how it's even that low. And what's nice, too, is because if you have the hosting there and you do the DNS, all of this can just be managed, and it's just like click, click, so point this .com to this virtual host, click, click, done. And install WordPress. And Yeah. It's <laughs> and seriously done. So, and it's always up to date, yeah. and it works perfect, and you're not getting hacked all the time. That's, That's awesome. kind of nice. You can install, I think, PHP BB you can install yeah, yeah, with yeah. one click. Yeah. That's There's a awesome. ton of stuff in, in the uh, GoDaddy Marketplace thing that they have. For, it's great. Yeah. Anyway, GoDaddy's awesome. You guys know that because you watch this show and you're awesome. Also, uh, bring that up real quick so I can show people the website. Uh, also, Danica Patrick. D- D- Danica. If you go there right now, it's Danica Patrick. D- Danica. Yeah, refresh refresh the page real quick. Oh, Brian. Oh, Brian. Are I'm you sure you want to do this? Here we Are go. you Here sure? We go. Okay, I'm going to hit it. Here I go. Here I go, Brian. Oh, okay. <laughs> And uh, I love GoDaddy.com. They are fantastic. <laughs> GoDaddy.com has got you covered. All right. Uh, what else are we talking about? Well, I wanted to talk about two different Android picks. <laughs> okay. I can't I help I forgot it. that we do that. I know. I'm sorry. All I know right. you're not an Android user, but you know, no, I hear from so I many like, people out there I that like love Android. Hey, I make a development environment that develops Android yeah, apps. Yeah. You know what? I should make an app. That you should make an app. I should make an app. That's what I'm saying. For Android using Illumination Software Creator. I really should. You really should. You think I could? What do you mean? Of course you could. I will. Little old ladies are using Illumination Software Creator now. <laughs> That's adorable. Well, only one that I know of for sure. Aww. But I know she is a little old lady. Now, I want to tell you about my first Android pick. It is a change to the default browser. The browser that ships with Android actually, uh, starting with 2.2, is not bad. Yeah. And so I, I haven't really... I've been using Dolphin since I first got an Android phone a while ago. Yeah. I hadn't really made it a pick yet because I've been kind of slowly waiting for the built-in browser just to get better. I'm not a big fan of having to replace your stock browser and crap like that. But you know what, Ryan? I'm sick of waiting. You're sick. So I'm going to recommend uh, Dolphin Browser to folks, and it's nice. It's Look got at that good-looking website on there. It's got uh, it's got a really good uh, you know page renderer. It's it's a little slow on some on some media heavy sites when you're rendering the whole thing all zoomed out, but it's not bad. The tab browsing experience is really is is tops. Uh, it really pops through tabs fast, and it also supports. Uh, this is again this is a Dolphin Browser. It, Dolphin Browser HD is its actual name. It also supports some gestures, so I can like swipe uh, one direction. And and I get. I'm trying to think of how. I, there it goes. And I get like all my bookmarks and stuff on one on one uh, panel. It's kind of like Firefox Mobile that way. Yeah, and it also reminds.
reminds me a little of Win Seven as well because sometimes when I swipe over, I can uh, so there's a there's like a I have there's add-ons like like Firefox like Firefox and Chrome have on the desktop. Yeah, you can get add-ons for uh, it's just not doing it. it. Yeah. yeah, different gestures bring up your add-ons, and so you can get different add-ons for this browser that do some really nice things, and that is kind of what really sets it apart from the stock Android one, right? Because the stock Android lets you do some things, but here's an example. I have a couple of add-ons that I've installed, and one of them is it converts any web page I'm on right to a PDF. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, which is really nice for, like, show notes and stuff like that. That is actually very and, handy. And then I can just save it, and then... And then you can use it for later. Yeah, exactly. Cut a screenshot out and call it good. Yeah, and then I can use another service on here to like move it to my Dropbox immediately and oh, stuff like that. That's nice. So it's got a whole bunch of uh, add-ons available, and that's Dolphin Browser, and that's really a neat one. Uh, now, another one that I've just started playing with, because I, I did say I was going to give two picks, and it, I actually, it, it got my attention because it came out for the I, iPhone. And it was the Skyfire browser that lets yeah, you play Skyfire. Flash videos. Yeah, yeah it, it converts Flash videos over to a non-Flash format. Yeah, over to H.264 yeah. on the fly. Yeah, on their servers. Well, Sky, kind of neat. Skyfire is also available, uh, and it's actually been available for a while on the Android platform. And it's yeah. uh, at version 3.0 now. And it essentially does the same thing. And I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, because you know, on my Evo, I have Flash 10.1, and I can play Flash video. Uh, but I so I thought I'd give it a shot, and I, I think it still it does still do its conversion. But what's really neat is if you go to like justin.tv slash Jupiter Broadcasting, that's where we're broadcasting live now. Yeah, it can actually convert that video live in real time, so you can actually watch our live stream on your Android. Oh, device. really? So that's that's, that's, that's kind of really neat. slick. Yeah, so I dig that. Skyfire browser lets you do that um, on the iPhone and iPads. There's a justin.tv app. So if you have like so an you can iPod, do it that way. you can watch the live stream that yeah. way. But if you're on Android, you can just un- use until we get an audio only stream up, I-, I would just recommend using yeah, use Skyfire. That's rocking. Hey, how do you like that, Brian? You like those I, picks? I like it quite a lot, so that's, Christopher. So that's uh, Dolphin Browser HD and uh, the Skyfire Browser. Both links will be in the Linux Action Show show notes. And also, uh, we have now a link to all of the previous app picks. A uh, big thanks to Majo in the IRC chat room. Who has been uh, keeping all... He made a list of all of the Android app picks I've ever made, which are a ton. And I just want to say, I've only picked one pay app so far. Really? Everything else I've done has been free, and I'm working on another paid pick. So prepare yourself. You're working on one. Oh, I I might. Get yourself all geared up for it. I'm testing it real good to make sure it's worth the money. Real good. Because it's thirty bucks. Thirty dollars. Yeah. Holy crap! (laughs) I know. So I'm making sure it's really worth it before I say anything. (laughs) Is it awesome? (laughs) Yeah, it's awesome. It is. You can talk about it next week. Yeah, maybe. I might. We'll see. Is this a little we'll tease? See. Yeah, it's a little tease. All right. All right, Brian. How exciting. Let's do the news. Edge of my seat. What's new in the news this week? All right, Brian. Our top story on the news docket for this week. It's no big deal. Not big. Not a big story. Nobody's talking about it. Might as well skip it. Attachmate buys Novell for $2.2 billion dollars That's, for those of you listening to the audio version you are missing a gigantic red novel very logo dramatic I, we might add right it's huge i mean how, how impactful is that uh, i am between the v and the e and yep. the v itself is about the size of my torso and i'm hanging out with yeah. the lds you <laughs> <laughs> as chris right. as chris so succinctly pointed out <laughs> He is hanging out <laughs> with the LZs. Now, uh, let's talk about this deal. So this is, we're going to break it down for you guys. Now, first of all, we got to say, uh, a really interesting story as it developed, and we can talk about that in a second. We first started getting wind about this back in uh, March of 2010 in uh, Season 11, Episode 4 of The Big Show here, Brian. Uh, yeah, we actually titled that episode, Goodbye, Novell. Yeah, and if you recall, <laughs> back then, the big scuttlebutt was is that VMware was attempting to buy Novell. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And uh, what, what kind of the... That rumor was still floating around as late as like two weeks ago. Yeah, and what the, and what the, what the sort of unconfirmed reason it died was the uh, suspect that... People are having a hard time selling all of Novell's patents. That there was a lot of patents that Novell had applying to Linux technology, Unix technology, basic networking technology. You know, really owning the copyrights to Unix. Yeah. These kinds of things that was just this really, really uh, desirable plat- uh, portfolio. 
I love desirable portfolios. So it's an interesting. It's interesting now to see that this attachment deal that went down. Uh, the way it sort of broke out was parts of of Novell went to uh, this holdings company, yeah. organized by Microsoft. And well, in part by Microsoft. Microsoft well, is a part of a consortium. So, now that, check out. That, here's the level that, of consortium. That's what I, yeah. Here's so this cons- this is an LLC that has been set up in Delaware. Okay. In Delaware, you don't. You don't have to disclaim if there's multiple members of this company or if it's a single person. Okay. And you can just now be this LLC corporation operating out of here that doesn't have to report your board things and all that all that stuff Way that people go, you'd want to have that see that keep things very anonymous and very questionable. And then and and they were just recently formed within the last few months. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so it's kind of like it was formed for this deal. Yeah. Got yeah. It. That's Got the it. thing. Now, what does that really mean? Who knows? Is that is is that unusual? No. So we'll see what actually happens there. But I think it's a, a lot little of suspicious. companies, uh, even like local companies, are like headquartered in Delaware. Technically, totally, totally, yeah. it's really common. Especially if you want to set up a little shelf company just to do something with and make you know isolate it from the rest of your company and things. So like we that. don't know. We we don't right. know. So, so 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 they bought these. They bought these different um, patents right. or or copyrights and things we like Novell that. Novell had a ton, and Novell had a ton, and yeah. and there was this huge concern that what one of the copyrights that this consortium bought was the Unix copyright. Because then Microsoft could theoretically say, "Well, look, Linux is infringing not just on I mean, a technological Unix patents. Yeah, Linux is infringing Unix patents and, and copyright. Not so because once you have copyright, see the difference between having the copyright and the patent is the patent you patent say the way Linux boots or the way a Unix system boots, right? Sure. But with a copyright, you can you can copyright theory." Principle the co- the the way Unix behaves. What it doesn't you can't really destroy a Linux with one without the other. But having both the copyright and patent infringement is a, like a really amazing one-two combo to go after like a Red Hat, right? Yeah? yeah, yeah. So they don't have that. Novell came out and said we retain the Unix copyright, which means that Attachmate really has right, it. right. Because Attachmate, because Novell is now a wholly owned subsidiary exactly. of Attachmate. Yep. So now Attachmate owns that, which. Uh, I, I think is okay. You know, attach attachment uh, yeah, is fine like, with it. Attachment's a local company here in Washington. Yeah, honestly, this is great for us. Basically, the headquarters of Novell went from a uh, Utah. Which, come on, I don't like going to Utah. <laughs> I'm not a big Utah guy. Nothing against all of the fans <clears throat> of ours in Utah, but you should probably move somewhere. Yeah, you should move somewhere. Yeah, uh, somewhere. That's not Utah. You know, my... I don't like going to Utah. <laughs> so so please, please move somewhere else. What was I talking about? Right. Attachment. So Attachmate is now located in Bellevue, Washington, yeah. which is great because it's local, it's really close by, and it's it's local. This is the big deal. So now one of the big players in the Linux world is moved... In our backyard. Right here, literally... A, 10 minute drive from Microsoft main campus. So the interesting That's awesome to me. The interesting thing about Attachmate is my experience with them I is, could just see them putting up a bowling league yeah. where it's basically like Sousa versus Windows uh, <laughs> those teams cuz now they're right there. That's be funny. I mean, come on. That's they go a to local opportunity. They go to the local pizza place and get in, and get into like a little bit of a of a, a scuffle in the arcade. Well, yeah, fisticuffs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. mono on mono work. Yeah. Now, uh, my experience with Attachmate has been in the uh, connecting like machines to old legacy uh, yeah. like mainframe terminals and stuff like that at banks and whatnot. So yeah. Attachmate has a connection to the whole uh, Unix world and a lot of the people in that world are migrating to Linux. Yeah. They're you know they're they're replacing their old proprietary Unix servers with Linux systems, and we're talking and like so having hard, SUSE, hardcore Unix like we're talking HPUX yeah. and VMS, and these guys are these guys are not screwing around right. Unix wise, and they've been around doing that stuff since like the attachment's been the around since eighty one, yeah, eighty one, uh, yeah, okay. eighty one, and uh, so uh, most of my life. The, so uh, like 29 years old here. Jeff Hahn is the president and CEO of Attachmate, and uh, he came out and he said that uh, in regards to OpenSUSE, that they have an, uh, an invested interest in seeing the SUSE product continue to do well, and that they believe that OpenSUSE is a key component to the SUSE product, so therefore they're going to let OpenSUSE continue as is, and they're not really messing with that. And then you have to remember, OpenSUSE is is led by a community board, right? So it's not like theoretically one company could completely destroy that distribution yeah. or anything like that. But they're going to want to see some sort of support, and uh, so Attachment came out and said that OpenSUSE has a blog posting that sort of sounds like 
they don't really know what's going on. Of course not. You know, last it night... It takes a while for the dust to settle exactly. after stuff like this I, I, happens. I think a lot of people are keeping quiet because of that. Last yeah. night, I, I tooled around on the, on the mailing list and on the OpenSUSE forms yep. and on the OpenSUSE planet, and I, I really just did not see a lot of conversation about this. I think a lot of people are still waiting to hear. Yeah. So how it affects OpenSUSE is still not fully understood. Yeah, you know, I don't think this is going to be that big of a deal overall. I mean, Novell still exists as a company. They're yeah. just wholly owned by Attachment I think so. right now. Yeah. Um, it's not that big of a deal. No one's killing off OpenSUSE or anything like they that. They retained the Unix copyrights. Uh, That's great. That's it, Honestly, this seems like great news. This is a big difference between like how this merger and acquisition went versus, say, how Oracle went. When, oh, when they grabbed absolutely. Sun. Yeah. When they grabbed Sun, yeah. Obviously, everyone's all freaked out and pissed yeah, off a little bit, yeah. and for good reason. But this... I really don't see a problem here. I agree, and you know the other thing. The other thing that jumped in, into my head is, well, one thing that maybe doesn't really fit with that whole attachment, their mainframes, their their legacy systems is, I don't really see mono fitting in there. So I thought, well, how does this hmm. affect mono, right? Well, so I fl I flipped over to Twitter and Miguel Ducaza had. Oops. Posted. I really haven't found much more about this other than Miguel's tweet that's that a, just said. That's a pretty good statement, though. Yeah, he said after Novell's acquisition, mono continues as is. But now our paychecks will come from Attachmate instead of Novell. Oh my goodness! And I honestly don't know much more than the that. world shatters. I don't know. Actually, this There's nothing really big change. Uh, mono, I think, out of everything, has the most to lose. I think you're fine. I don't. I don't see where Mono fits into an attachment strategy. It's, there's a there's a value there. I I, I really don't see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, okay. I, I, I like until until I see something where attachment comes out and says, "Yeah, so we bought all that stuff, but we're gonna kind of go ahead and scrap it all." Oh, by the way, we sold it to this guy in Serbia who just says he wants to take over America. I don't think that's a problem, right? So, I mean, until they come out and say something like that, it's fine. Yeah, I have no issues. I think maybe Mono fills that gap where you're moving from the legacy systems to the new systems, and sometimes you have to recreate yeah. certain components and applications. I mean, a lot of Mono what would be that. a lot of what Attachmate does is making it easy for to administer Unix machines from Windows. Windows workstations to bridge the gaps between the two types of servers. That's a lot of what Attachmate does. And yeah. having things like Mono available to run uh, Windows-based or Microsoft-based server technology on Linux and right. Unix-based platforms, that's exactly what they do. And it may not be terminal emulation like Attachmate so, so, has always done, but But so it, it fits. It fits in it that fits. strategy. The other thing, too, well... It's an oddly good fit that I'm kind of amazed I didn't think of. I know. It I mean, VMware. Like we good thought fit. VMware, but we thought VMware because the SUSE, virtualization, you know, and, we, things and, like that. and we it's so much and like SUSE Studio and SUSE Gallery. It made sense to have that all tied into like a a big parent company that was right. pushing the virtualization space. Right. Right. But. I, I, we never really considered seriously most of the other options out but there, and Attachmate's a good one. Doesn't this mean that Attachmate and Novell's number one competitor is now Red Hat? Because yeah. if they're going for people migrating from the Unix legacy systems to Linux, the vendor that traditionally people are looking at is Red Hat, yep. and that's where Red Hat's making its money. Red Hat is not taking a ton of market share away from Windows servers. The statistics and sales show it's taking away from legacy Unix. Right. That's exactly where Attachmate seems totally entrenched and ready to also take market from. Right. So now we're going to have two two major Linux distributions essentially going head to head, and it seems like whenever we start this uh, large scale infighting, all we're doing is we just give ground to Microsoft. No. Oh come on. Heavens, no. This is this is a, this is a big difference. Okay, lay so, it on me, B man. So here's here's the thing. This isn't just a couple of distros fighting amongst each other for their no, own I know, market I know. share. What we're talking about here is two mega big companies yeah. with deep pockets, right. realistically, yeah. who say, you know what? There's a ton of market potential here, and there's a ton of revenue potential here. We're going for it. Sure. Now, that means that, A, we have a great market here. That means we have a good, growing market here, because neither of those companies, especially Attachmate, would be in any way interested if they thought, well, this is a pretty it's stagnant a money loser. market. Right, no, that's a good point. They want it if it's going to grow. That's true. And they're that's looking true. at that as a huge mega company, and they're saying, this is going to grow. They're putting their bet in, this is growing. I see Linux that. is growing. Yep. Linux servers is growing. The migration between Windows and Linux servers is growing. And you, and, the, and people are leaving and Unix servers exactly. at a faster this pace. Exactly. This is a big, big deal I see them. that. Now... Now, from my standpoint, mm -hmm. I've been looking at Red Hat 
and thinking they really haven't been, in my opinion, innovating. They haven't been pushing the envelope. And then I looked over at Novell and what Novell has been doing with Sousa Studio and Sousa Gallery and these sorts of solutions. While they are not the core bit of the distro, they allow people to do something that's uniquely interesting yeah. that no other software provider offers currently. Well, I mean, look at the build service. Big. You look at the build service, and, and we talked about last episode how the Mego project is utilizing the OpenSUSE build service. Exactly. And, and it's like, by, by, by OpenSUSE having that build service available, they've improved the overall Linux ecosystem as a whole. Significantly. Mm -hmm. And so, if nothing else, this prompts Red Hat to get off their lazy butts, in my opinion, and do something that maybe. is is uniquely more interesting, yeah, maybe. and that can only benefit us. That pushes people to get to to get not stagnant. Yeah, and I feel like some portions of the Linux ecosystem have been stagnant lately, uh, and I think Red Hat is is one of the chief among them. And I feel like they can do great. Mm. They've got the money. They've mm -hmm. got the engineering know how. Mm -hmm. They've got the expertise. I want to see them really push forward. Interesting. And then if we've got both Red Hat and a Novell and attachment sitting around doing these amazing things, the build service and the studio and, and Red Hat maybe has their own solutions that are even better in maybe in a year. People are going to be looking at that and going, wow, these two it's companies hot, yeah. using Linux are coming up with these amazing technologies. Yeah. Then they're going to turn and go, wow, 10 miles away from attachment. Oh, hi, Redmond. Well, you know, the other hi, thing... Hi, Microsoft. What are you doing that has that power? This kind of backs up your point. The other nice thing that does is if I'm a shop right now and say I'm on an HP UX or a System 390 and I need to migrate to a Linux system, right now, Red Hat's kind of the big dog as yep. commercial vendors go. If attachment Novell, you know, Novell's been picking up market share, uh, the, SUSE, the SUSE Linux stuff has been the profitable side of Novell. Yep. And if they continue to gain momentum, you've now got two healthy competitors in that space, whereas with Microsoft, that's only Microsoft. If Microsoft makes a product change you don't like, if Microsoft drops support in a way that you don't, don't like, a lot of options. you're stuck if you, go, if, you, if you migrate to a Windows infrastructure. But now if you migrate to a commercial Linux infrastructure, you've got two healthy competitors, one backed up by attachment who's, got a, who's really well established in that space. Right. So it could be a win-win combo. It's it's just like, I mean, look at the mobile phone space right now. It's realistically, the big fight is between iPhone and Android. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I mean, really. In I mean, terms Blackberry's of Blackberry's there, Nokia's yeah, there, everyone, honestly. But, but in like our mind share. Mind share, totally. That's the, that's the fight. Completely and agree. right now, Android's winning. Why is Android winning? Well, you know, Motorola Choice. comes out with a phone and Samsung comes yeah. out. All these phones keep coming. HTC comes out with awesome phones. Mm -hmm. But whenever that happens, sure, we sit around and go, well, market fragmentation, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end... It's kind of, it kind of takes care of itself. It takes care of itself. It benefits to point, the industry. Though. To a point, I mean, like... You don't want a billion different things fragmented. Android everything. is suffering. You know, you look at the Angry Birds devs and having to drop support for a bunch of phones. There's and stuff negative like that. points yeah. to be sure. Yeah. But it forces both Google with Android to improve Android and it forces the individual hardware manufacturers to Absolutely. get better. Yeah. Same deal here. Attach mate and novel uh, or attach novel. Novellmate. I like Novellmate. Novellmate. Yeah. Yeah. Novellmate no -mate. versus Nomate versus uh, versus Red Hat. If they're both doing awesome stuff, oh, and yeah. it's both with Linux. Yeah. Linux rises. Let's. Uh, That's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the meats before we move on, because uh, the meat of this wholesale is extremely interesting, and this is coming from ConsortiumInfo.org, and uh, you know I'm not a uh, financial expert or anything like that. What? But here's an interesting thing. So let's talk about that uh, CPTN, the Microsoft Consortium. They they pay for 450 million, uh, I don't want to call them patents because it's more than just patents, but we'll just say an IP bundle worth $450 million. Right. U.S. Now, having now, now Novell has come out and said that did not include Unix, right? Okay. Right. So uh, that leaves, uh, so this, remember, this is a 2.2 .2 billion purchase. So that leaves uh, so $1.7 billion money. that Attachmate actually had to pay. But when you run down uh, all of this different stuff, like the $660 million of assets that they had, um, so just in assets, right. and then they had another $1.09 billion, Novell did, in the bank. So Novell, you know, Novell was worth... About Novell as the, as the company was worth about six hundred and sixty million dollars. If you after you, everything was said and done, uh, and then they were sitting on about a billion in cash. So that's not too bad. 
Holy moly. Really, I mean, they had, they had, they had, uh, you know, a little emergency fund. But here's what's crazy, Brian. They had a slush fund. Uh, this is totally. I call that party money. Yeah, that's the party money. Yeah. But after you uh, factor in uh, paying oh, for. Oh, attach me. Just so you know this, uh, before you bought Novell, Novell gave us a call. This was just like just before. Yeah. Had, and they were like, we want to throw you guys a $572 million party. Um, so you'll want to make good on that attachment. Eight hundred, eight hundred and eighty-two patents were in total. What was sold to the CPTN uh, consortium? Eight hundred and eighty-two patents. We don't know which ones though. Okay. Though those will come out. Uh, so the deal's expected at the earliest. Uh, to close no sooner than January 23rd of 2011. So okay. this isn't a done deal yet. It's still uh, working. And yeah. at that point, they have to do an 8K filing, and in this filing, uh, Microsoft will have to disclose the patents that it purchased. And so th those 882 patents for $450 million will be disclosed at that time. So it's not huh. going to go... Uh, we're not going to... We're not going to not find out forever. But here's the really interesting bit of information. Uh, sometime in a couple of months, we'll announce yeah. that officially Attach made his own... Uh, owns Novell. Yeah, and here's the interesting bit. After you factor in the cash that Novell had that Attachment gets, uh, their assets, paying for all their debt, the chunk of patents that this consortium group bought. Now, these are just according to this is according to the consortium info uh, dot org. The total cash out purchase price that Attachment is paying for Novell. Lay it on me. Four hundred and twenty five million dollars. <laughs> So from a two point two billion headline, after you cook all the numbers oh, man. and 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 break it all all out, the actual cash out of pocket is four hundred twenty five million. If that's true, that's such a sweet deal. That's a huge deal for retaining the Unix copyright, for getting the Susa business, for getting the Mono stuff. Damn, that's huge. That's good stuff. And bringing along all those developers and engineers and and marketing people. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. I mean, they've got some talented people. Consortium you know, attached, mate owns their souls that's awesome consortiuminfo.org has a ton of more information i'll link to that in the show notes but uh pretty crazy all right brian it's what do you say we move crazy on? you ready talk talk a little bunch yes of yes let's move on so there was it's a, important there was a pretty interesting headline that uh i don't very often tag things in my newsreader with omg but this one got tagged oh my god that'd be so awesome uh <laughs> ubuntu was rumored to be switching to a rolling release style. Oh my God, Ubuntu.co.uk covered this. And uh, it was yep. based off an offhand comment from Mark from Shuttleworth. Mark, yeah. And it kind of got blown out of proportion. And honestly, I was really excited when I heard this because my first thought was, oh, oh, wait a minute, Ubuntu just got a ball sack. Not that switching to Wayland and all this other stuff they're talking about, but a rolling paid, release would be so huge. So huge. But here's the thing. Lay it on They me. came out and said, nah. We're, we're sticking to our release cycle. We're going to make an engineering release that's a little more rolling. And and here's huh. here is the thing about Ubuntu. When Ubuntu came out, it was a really big deal. They were sticking to a six-month release cycle because yeah. they felt it encouraged all of the other products projects to kind of get on a rhythm. You know, Xorg and Gnome. Everybody there's, a, just, there's, a, there's a point to let's that. Let's just yeah. ship, you know, real yeah. artists ship, blah, make it blah, happen. blah. Make it get out there. And that six-month deadline... While self-inflicted does kind of seem to grease the wheels, so it might actually not be a good thing if they did that. And if they do do, if they do like an engineering, Chris, branch, I have to stop you for a second. You said doo doo. I know. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was nice, wasn't it? You know, we you're got. You're gonna name this episode doo doo, right? You gotta appreciate the moments, Brian. Yeah, the little little moments. You take them as they come, Chris. If they do a development branch, though, I'm totally yeah. running it. I'm totally running it. I want it always rolling updates. I want good latest stuff. Maybe not like on a production, like See, I got to work on this machine, but like on a, on like a little Netflix. Like a that's side not box. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Why not? See, my, my thing is though, I do so much development under Ubuntu um, that, and I have a couple different distros that I have to use the one that people are using I know the it. most. I know it. So if, if Ubuntu switched to rolling, I'd switch to rolling. But if they're sticking to their six month, I have to That'd stick to their six month That'd be a pain in the butt too. for you, wouldn't it? If they're all, if people are always getting rolling updates? Oh, it would suck. Yeah. Yeah, it would suck. You'd have to come up with a whole new... I mean, it, it would be great... 99% of the time, but that 1% that it wasn't great. Yeah, something would, like would a really GTK library me. would change. Yeah, it would just or, really screw yeah, me up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's a good thing. Yeah, so I'm all right with it. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I don't care. All right, Brian. <laughs> that's all the news. No, it's not. For this week. No, it's not. It can't possibly be all the news. Why not? That's it. For this week.
So last week we talked very, very briefly about the boxy box. Mm. Everyone's talking about the boxy box. Boxy box. The boxy box this, the boxy box that. There's been reviews of the boxy box about how, I think Gizmodo or Lifehacker or someone did a review that was like, wow, it sure does play a lot of formats, but yeah. it totally is the suck source and you don't want it by an Apple TV. Or someone said something yeah, like yeah. that, which made me want to punch him. Well, you see, Brian, it's a Linux box. But you've got the boxy box. I do, yeah, yeah. Running, powered by Linux, mm-hmm. made by D-Link. Mm-hmm. You've been using it, mm-hmm. hooked up to your main TV. Yep. For for like two weeks now, you know that was it, uh, two, yeah, maybe close to two weeks. Yeah, I got it as soon as it shipped, and that so was how is it? that was the big roll of the dice. When you take it out of your, when you go into your living room, your main TV watching spot, you pull out the t- tried and true PS3. I've been using the PS3 to play everything. Yep, and I pulled it out and I put the boxy box in, and I didn't really brief the wife on it. You know what I mean? Like didn't do the whole spousal it just, prep. It just was a surprise. And 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 I gotta say, it actually went okay. Really? Uh, off the top, I, let's just talk about a couple of things that that made it fail on the spousal approval factor. Because I do right, have some positive right, let's, things. Let's 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 hear the negatives first. Uh, by default, it goes to sleep, and so you you know the wife goes out there, she turns on the TV, she turns on the AV receiver, no picture. Well, that's weird. So now, okay, well maybe something's wrong with this thing. So she's trying different stuff, changes input, no picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. She just has to touch a button on the remote to that's wake not it so up. That's so bad. So you tell her, yeah, hey, by the way. But once you learn that, yeah. it's fine. And the boxy box has like this, like this, a little logo on the front of it that totally will key out on our video version here. And it, 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 and it's, it goes to a faded green. Uh, and then it, it goes to a brighter green gotcha. when it's online. And it goes to a red green if it has errors and stuff like that. So there's that issue. The other problem with the boxy box, and you know, I'm just kind of getting the negative stuff out of the way, is I'm not as big of a fan of the remote as I thought I would be. It's an interesting remote. It's a cool looking remote because it's got a full quarter yeah. keyboard on one side and like three buttons on the other side. And it Super feels simple. It feels pretty good too. It, like it's not a bad feeling keyboard no, on it. No, no. The problem with this remote is that in the dark, you can't tell what end is up and what end is down. So mean? there's no there's there's like just a really there's like a slight repressed boxy logo oh, I see what that you're you can saying. kind of feel but otherwise you don't know because the play button and the this. menu button are the same exact size Hold this up hold this up Sh- zoom in on me here There's a Whoop! There we go, flopping around. So you can yeah. see, yeah. If, if you're watching the video version, the the remote is like symmetrical front to back. So if you flip it around, I see what Chris is saying. It's the same. Yeah, it's the same remote, regardless. Uh, or you know, the buttons are the same, and you can't really feel that. You can't get the. You can't just like with the TV and how remote. How often? How often do you watch TV in bright light? Exactly. You turn the lights down. And exactly. You have exactly. That's yeah. always the problem. Is I'm I'm always kind of in the dark already with it. But yeah. I make it work. You know, I, my thumb can feel for the boxy logo. Now, and, if you and it if happens. you feel the box bottom of it uh does it uh, he's got the like the space bar and what on the bottom so if yeah. you hold if you feel yeah. the keys on the bottom you can yeah. kind of figure but it out you don't want to the, the buttons are are, are, are kind of hard to or easy to press you don't want to accidentally press the wrong gotcha. thing but gotcha. having that qwerty keyboard is super nice that's cool it is really good for like searching on the web because it has a built-in web browser with flash 10 one and so it's nice to be able to type in www.jupiterbroadcasting.com and then you slowly use the mouse using the D-pad. And if anyone's got like a PS3 and you've had the horror of trying to use the PS3 to like enter in a, a web URL, oh my gosh. it's awful. The controller is just terrible. You have to have a keyboard to do it properly. Now the other thing, and I think this is going to be fixed with future firmware updates. I've already gotten one update. They put one out on Thanksgiving actually. Uh, but the um, UI can be a little leggy. Not not uh, popcorn hour leggy, popcorn popcorn a100 and a110 leggy but you know a little a little slower than i'd like yeah and i'm used to boxy on like like a nice desktop because you can get the software that you just run on your machine and that's as snappy as your desktop is and so i'm used to popping up pretty yeah. good this is a 1.2 gigahertz atom it's got like 5 12 megs of ram or something like that so that's it's not plenty beefy it's it's not like it's a it's not like it's a starving machine so i would expect the thumbnails to, to pop up a little quicker gotcha you know what i mean and, gotcha. and, and they don't always uh not a big now, deal but now interestingly so this is from d-link uh this is really kind of replacing the old d-link Media Lounge yeah, series. Yeah. Now, Which also I, ran Linux. I have a D-Link Media Lounge at home, mm-hmm. and it is slow as molasses. Like, is it like you, Popcorn Hour slow? Oh, it's way slower oh, than okay, Popcorn okay. Hour. It's like it's like Popcorn Hour frozen. No. Uh, it's hard to navigate through the menus because Ooh, you hit a button and you wait forever. Yeah. And so really, for D-Link, this is a huge improvement over uh, what they used to have. If you're watching the video versions, it's a good one because I've got some pictures that I fixed it did a complete teardown of the boxy box. And this is this is you know the Linux Action Show. We like to be geeky with our reviews. So if you look at the sucker, it's a you know it's an Atom PC in here. Yeah. And uh, but they've done some really interesting things regarding uh, like the hardware design. 
Like you can have HDMI video signal, but still have stereo audio out. So I like that. They've got some actual really nice hardware chips on this board. Yeah. Like the parts that are on this thing are are like known for being a good video scaler, known for being a good audio processor, things like that. So I think they've got all the hardware bits right. They're just not quite done with the firmware yet. And to that it is new. I mean, it, it is, is new. very brand and they, new. And out. they did a uh, You're they, an early adopter here, man. They did a UI change. If you're if you're familiar with Boxy on on the desktop, it's got a really nice, rich, colorful UI. Yeah. And you've got when you a go to your main transparencies page, transparencies and fluid and motion. You, get your, you got your cue on one side. You got your feed on the other side. You got your top stuff along the top. Well, on the Boxy box, they kind of did a more watered down UI. It's a little more stale. Uh, all it the is. same basic stuff there, and the other the other major sin that the boxy box makes, and it might not be because I might I might not be the right target audience, so this might be why. And I've seen a lot of complaints in the forums, but it really emphasizes online media over your own local library. Well, I have yeah. I have a pretty good local library, and so in order to get to my local library, I have to go through a couple of extra sub menus. Not a big deal. No, I mean that's not ideal. Sa- it's the same though for an Xbox or a PlayStation Absolute. Three or whatnot. You, Absolutely. You, like on a play a PlayStation Three, you find you usually have to go about three or four sub menus deep before you ever even can get to yeah. the first of your videos. Now, there's so a, it's not that different. Now it does focus pretty heavily on the online media, so I just thought i'd try it out and for an example it's it's pretty hit and miss but uh so you go to uh, tv shows and okay. you go to this tv show screen and on this tv show screen it's a mixture of all of your local media and online content sort of automatically overlaid on top of each other so it doesn't matter if you don't have every episode of south park on a file server because it'll automatically lay in the ad supported versions where you're missing stuff yes. and that's, that's really nice. That's really cool. It's great for the wife because she can just sit down and she doesn't have to she doesn't have to know if it's on the file server or not. And if she's missing one file, she doesn't come to you and go, Chris, right. how come you didn't right. rip the uh the, yeah, the, yeah. this one particular and we, episode? We're having a you right. know, we're having our kid Dylan and constantly having all these little kids' movies and stuff. What what Let's go grab it. Just you go just, watch it. Exactly. Um some online content like South Park is amazing. It's full screen video playback. You hit it, it comes right up. That's cool. It's great. Some stuff like The Daily Show, which is also a Comedy Central, is balls to watch on the box. It's <laughs> awful. It's it brings up a full narrow web page. So you know you have a 1080p picture up with just this narrow web page with a video embedded inside that. Wait, and, wait. So you mean like the web page is just in the middle with big black bars on the well, side? Yeah, like you know if you just like if you took a like if you took a web page, scaled it down and, and stretched it up to go up on a, on a on an HD screen, it just doesn't fit properly. I mean the video is in the middle of it and then you got to uh. use the boxy boxes remote to go up there and hit the full screen button. And these this isn't boxy boxes fault. This is how the media get, content gets to them right and if you were going to do that on your pc already anyways well now you can just do it on your tv so it's not that big of a difference but yeah, it's, it's still not a good experience so i would rather see by default focus on all my local content because yeah. that's a great experience every time yeah you know what i mean yeah so that's a knock now that said plays everything everything plays everything yeah uh 15 megabit on on their freaking site when they're talking about like ripping DVDs and backing up your Blu-rays and DVDs for the boxy box, their recommended settings start at eight thousand kilobits a second. Awesome. I mean, this thing can process some awesome. video streams like nobody's business, Brian. Love it. And in you know with the with the continued firmware updates, I think it'll get better. My my main uh, problem. And interestingly, during that same period that this comes out with this massive power, the PlayStation Three with it, with its amazing multi-cell processor thing, they've updated it. Now everything plays back slower and it has a hard time yeah, handling large files. It seems like the files. video playback gotten, support's gotten it worse. It gets worse and worse and worse. And then Boxy comes along, or D-Link comes along with the Boxy box and just everything fast. Couple I love of, uh, that. Three last points I want to touch on on the Boxy box. One is uh, it has an app browser, which seems to be growing content pretty quickly. And you can, by default, it hides it, but you can actually get things like uh, porn on there. They have porn apps. Uh, there's RSS feeds. Which what we're nice. saying is the first thing Chris did was... Yeah, Turn on yeah, the poor. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so they also will let you put uh, connect your Facebook in there, so you can be like, "I'm watching Glee." Facebook that ass, <laughs> and then you know, uh, but it, and Twitter. You can also uh, you can, there's a whole social aspect of boxing. Be honest, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I'm Chris Les on Boxy. What, what I can do is if I really like a show, like I just watched Inception on Boxy, yeah. and afterwards I I mark that I liked it, and now in my feed, people can go to their friends list and see what their different friends are watching that they like. And then they could say, oh, well, Chris liked Inception. And it'll, and what it'll say is, if you have Inception, would you like to watch it now? Or if it's something that can stream online, would you like me to stream it right now? Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I do like that. I would say, and and I like that they tie in with Flickr, and they can use they can use, use Flickr for like a photo screensaver and things like that. So yep. it's nice for that. 
But at the time of this review, and this is uh, late November, there is no Netflix and no Hulu. Hulu, I don't really, I'm not going to pay for Hulu. But Netflix, that would be a killer app to come to box. But it's coming. It's coming. So it's supposed cool. to be early December. And they're saying it's going to be one of the best interfaces interfaces for Netflix that we've seen yet on a device. Really? That's what they say. Really? Because I've, I've been pretty happy with both the Xbox and the current PlayStation mm-hmm. 3 interface mm-hmm. for it. So if they mm-hmm. get it even better... I know it, dude. I'd be thrilled. So... It would. I would recommend. You know, it's like two ninety nine or one ninety nine. It's yeah. just, it's two hundred bucks. It's hundred bucks more than the Apple TV. Plays every format. Yeah, Apple TV plays nothing. It supports. Uh, you know, universal plug and play streaming, DMLA. It also, if you plug a USB hard drive into this, it can turn into a NAS box. Oh, I do so like that. So I guess I guess D Link and Boxy went back and forth a lot on should we build in storage or what. So you know, they went ahead and they added uh, two USB ports and a gigabit LAN port and I think their thought was somebody could plug something like a Drobo in or a Ready NAS or something like yeah. that and just stream directly to this. I'm I'm going right off of a Samba server with no problems. Just None. playing right off a of Samba server, not That's a single cool. issue. Yeah, it works great. Um, and and it's metadata collecting has gotten really good. You know, it goes out, it gets episode information, it gets movie information, and it, gets it does posters. all that just based on the name of the, yeah. the file, right? Yeah, it does. Okay. The, the the a ding there is you have to wait for it to go get that. So if you you know if you if you've got a new movie that you've backed up and you put it on your file server and you want to go watch it on it may TV, take a little bit. You got to wait for it to index it, or you got to go to even more sub menus and go to file browse mode. So getting it, it to the local content not great. Waiting for things to scan kind of sucks. I know, and the problem is that the larger the library, the harder it is to know when to monitor for scanning and things like that. Yep. But overall, as far as a device that you can plug into your network that runs Linux, that plays all your media, will run off of different types of sources, and has spousal uh, approval factor, I got to give it to the Boxy Box. This ain't bad looking. This actually would make yeah, and, a good holiday and, and gift to somebody. And what's the what's the cost currently? Uh, I, I think. I think I've got the link in our show notes. So I'll go double check. Yeah, um, bring that up because that's important, man. Yeah, that's that's, that's not something I want to say. With. In the U.S., it's it's one ninety nine. See, see two hundred bucks is cheap. Might be three ninety. It's one ninety nine. Yeah, two hundred bucks. So yeah. two hundred dollars. That's really not bad. Yeah. Now is now from from your experience so far, is there anything better? Like, is there a oh, better is build there it a better set top box for if you, sub three hundred bucks? If you built a if you built a Linux box, you know, if you built a Linux box, you put Boxy Box on it. Yeah, but, but but for the oh price, no sub three hundred no so and it's sub three hundred and this is totally quiet and when it's sleeping it's like pulling no power so I mean so that's the thing totally I mean, silent some people I mean, in the forums have complained about fan noise I've heard none okay uh, totally silent not had a single issue oh dude and on the bottom right here the box was printed with soy ink yeah. it says right there yep. soy ink there you go Brian ladies and ladies and gentlemen zoom in on that soy freaking <laughs> ink so if you want a box. Uh, that was printed in soy ink. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't either. Uh, you want the boxy box. I can't even pick this thing up. I would say... I love it. I, I, I kind of want one. I mean, would you recommend to a friend to get one? If you watch a lot of online content like our shows, you know, because on you, one of the nice things is you can log into Boxy's website and then you can add RSS feeds and stuff like that right to the boxy box. Yeah. So I did that. I went and I added the Linux Action Show's large video feed into this guy I, and, and I added a few other uh, podcast video feeds right into there. It worked great, and for and for the for the podcast feeds, basically it just indexes the RSS. Yep. You go down to it, and it just streams it basically off the site. Yep. It just plays as yep. it's kind of downloading, but yep. doesn't store it anywhere. And I've done HD versions, uh, large versions, all kinds of stuff. Works great. So w- what I have at this point, plus you combine that with the bookmarklet, you can get. Any online video you're at, YouTube or whatever, you can bookmark it, and it goes and saves to what the Boxy Box has, which is a global watch later Ooh. list. So you can send videos from your desktop to the watch later list. You can also be browsing your library or other online videos or podcasts on the Boxy Box and mark them as watch later, and then just go to your watch later queue and just start going. And so now I have one spot where I can watch a funny video somebody sent me, I can watch a podcast, and I can watch the latest episode of Smallville in cool. one spot. That's pretty cool. It's nice for that. So for, for me, it's 200 bucks is worth it, and I want to get another one for other upstairs uh and i think well, once see, they that, get netflix i'm totally sold so you want to get it a second one i do well then that's kind of a glowing review yeah for you. yeah and and i mean because a toy you know buying one toy that's nothing that's you know, why i wanted to be sure i mentioned all the negative stuff up front because i'm i'm saying i'm recommending it it's a buy with a caveat that it needs to get a little better uh, you know, I've read the bo- the Boxy Box blogs and their forms and all this stuff. I really think these guys have an inspiration of where they want to take this. Yeah. And I think they can do it. And the hardware in here is pretty good. I think it's a good first 1.0. 
I love it. Yeah. I, I yeah. I, I want to grab one myself. So that's that's actually pretty awesome. There you go, Brian. That's not too damn shabby. That's the Linux so, action show. I'm right little, there for you. I'm not little, too damn shabby. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little freaked out though that everything seems to be atom powered now. I'm yes. waiting for the phones to start being atom powered. They will be 2000, 2011. I got my tablet, atom powered. Everything's atom powered. That's the main thing we're hearing out of that Mego conference is that, uh, and Microsoft is saying, oh, you know, in, in 2011, uh, uh, Intel's going to have some new chips and there's going to be a Windows tablet. And then the Mego guys are saying, oh, yeah, you know, in 2011, uh, there's going to be some uh, Intel powered uh, tablet chips. Yeah. So, uh, all atom. You're mm-hmm. uh, almost a certain. But this yeah. has got, I think, this has for video, this has the NVIDIA Tegra 2 chip in it. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so, I mean, this thing... So, it's a little beefier. This thing's supposedly supposed to just be able to push HD streams like nothing else. Love it. So, there you go. I, haven't been able, I have not been able to max it out yet. No, I, sir. And I got, like, I got like a backup of Rambo that no. is, like, a 17 megabit file. We should say, <laughs> if you got some old and busted TV, just HDMI. Oh, right, yeah. That's the only type of video output Oh, boy, good, good disclaimer. Now, you can get an adapter from that HDMI to something else, but, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. That is HDMI. Great, yep, HDMI only. But it's and full 1080, right? Full, full everything, the whole gambit, but all the way up to 1080p. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, Brian. That's the look at the boxy box. And that brings us to the end of this, the most epic Linux action show ever, despite getting off to a very rocky start. We did pull through, man. We pulled through. The groove was thrown. We 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 picked up. We picked up the gauntlet, yeah, and then we threw it down, yeah, and we're yeah. like, "That is the gauntlet." I rotor rooted the groove, Brian, and then I and then I took my my foot, oh, and I did one of those because you're wearing things. as we discovered last episode, you're wearing socks now, correct? So you don't have to worry about it. And I had also had a line, yeah. You know what I did with that line? What I declared something. See not, that line, Brian. That's that line right there. That's the line. No farther than that line. This far, no farther. Right. Uh, and it was it was one of those that you know someday. Uh, the the world, line's gotta be drawn world here. of men will fall, but that is not this day. Right. One of those moments. Yeah. Seriously, if you guys have ever watched uh, the the final uh, installment of the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, the the speech uh, <laughs> that Aragorn gives at the very end, he 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 says it like repeatedly. Yep. But that is not this day, and it's just off. But that is not this day. But that is not this day. <laughs> and then he's like, and there will be one day when men will be super sad. But that's that not is day. not this day. <laughs> <laughs> it just um, makes me want to punch that guy. You know, Brian, which is Linux related. Speaking of that, a little bit. Uh, people really, 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 really want us to talk about this 200 uh, line fix for the Linux kernel. Uh, <sighs> I'm not ready to talk about. But it today yet. is not that day, Brian. But that is not this day. No, uh, we're waiting. We're waiting for this to shake out. Sometimes here, you see, we have the luxury here on the Linux Action Show of wisdom. Uh, the old, the old show, the old big show has been around for a little while now, folks. And sometimes things like this come up, and we sit on it for a bit to really wait to see what shakes out. So that we're, we don't talk out we're our not assholes. Like some some other Linux shows, you know what I'm saying? No, we wait. Oh, we do the prudent thing, and we do it right most of the time. Most no, no, no not not really. We just no. talk out of our butts sometimes. But, but sometimes yeah. we see this, yeah. and we're like, okay, there's no, a wait. there's a there's a there's this post out there that Red Hat. And and a bunch of other people have been going around saying they can they can speed up the Linux kernel with 200 code lines change. Another guy says I can fix it in four lines of code change. Yeah. And another guy saying I can fix it without even changing anything in the yeah, kernel. Yeah, just running a little little command line thing. So yeah. we're gonna wait. We're gonna we're gonna look at it and figure it out. And if it really is something to talk about, don't worry. We will talk about it here on the big show. We just want to talk about it the right way. I want I want to wait. Yeah, I mean, because honestly, hey, I want my kernel to run faster. Yeah. I I don't really care if it's 200 lines, a thousand lines, no or four lines. lines. I don't care if all I have to do to make my kernel run faster is run 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 one Firefox extension. I don't care. I want myself to Although, run faster. Although, if I did want to have a preference as to how my kernel could run faster, if I could make it run faster <laughs> via eating pancakes, that would be my preference. No, that would be my preference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm saying I'm not really all worked up about how I have to do it, but pancakes would be preferred. But you know that I mean? is not this day. <laughs> that is not that this is day. Not this day. All right, so we got anything else going on here? <laughs> um, so uh, originally, we were, I was planning on having uh, a little, uh, little, not really a review, but kind of like a sneak peek at yep. Migo running on the N nine hundred. Having a hard time making the N nine hundred boot now. Yeah. Um. So that's my. That's gonna I wait. Have... I'm gonna give it a try for next week, but we'll see how that goes. I want to know: Are people out there? It, are, are you interested anymore in netbooks? Are netbooks dead to you? What's going on with netbooks? I'll tell you what. I was doing uh, some pre Cyber Monday black shop, but you know, like you yeah. know, thinking in case there's some crazy deal on a netbook, I want to be current on netbooks so I know yeah. oh, that's a good spec. And nothing particularly was grabbing me, but there was a couple different choices. I thought, you know, I wouldn't mind grabbing a netbook and doing like a cool Linux build on there, seeing what distro is a really good net. Maybe take a look at the netbook remix for Ubuntu. Take a yep. look at Jolly Cloud. 
are people actually interested in netbooks? So Chiram C says no. So, uh, Peregrine Falcon says netbooks were never a good idea. Well, that's all in caps. BFC there, man. gave away his netbook. Wolf's is not terribly interested, so it doesn't sound like it. I, I think know. netbooks are we'll dead. See. I think netbooks are dead. See, the thing is, I love my netbook. Well, my netbook's a convertible tablet. I'm looking over though, at that, that MSI to, Win, to dude, and I'm thinking, I love you. Yeah, I, I love you. I, I, my Lenovo, I love. But see, then again, I like having a real beefy, Boy, powerful Bilbo, desktop. Bilbo, meh. Look at this. Look at these. All right, Kentucky loves his netbook. It's it's pretty all over. Fanless the Fanless just bought a netbook. Maybe maybe tablets are good. I don't know. I don't know. Netbooks are out. Tablets are in. We'll see. You know what? You know what got me going was that new seventy six system laptop. That's what kind of piqued my interest. That dual core Adam. It does look cool, doesn't I it? I know it. Yeah. Hey, so uh, we're gonna start featuring uh, more voicemails, and we want to get your emails on the show. So email us linuxactionshow at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Call us. Go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com and click on the contact us page. In there, Google Voice will call you. And connect you to our voicemail for frizzle. That's how I for, say it. For what? Uh, it's like the L's. You add the Z, that way people hear it. Frizzle? Yeah. What's a frizzle? It's free, so frizz? but with style. Frizz. No. What the Zol. Heck? What the hell are you it's talking spinning. about? It's spinning. It's a verbal Zol? spin. You know? A verbal spin on it's what? Like when you, it's like when you walk into a room and you say something and you twirl. You know how you do that? <laughs> well, yeah, I know how I do that. <laughs> But but I don't I don't I don't know what the frizzle is. Oh my What's God. frizzle? I don't know, man. I'm trying to spice it up. You know. What are you doing, dude? I don't know. I like it. What do you What do you think? This is the This is the 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 pimp pimps and hoes cast. Of- Yo, y'all! Y'all need to go over to JupiterBroadcasting.com, y'all. Y'all need to click on contact us. It's the dot com mizzle. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, we don't talk like that, man. We don't right, do I'm that. Sorry. Dude. We don't do that. LL says frizzle to the dizzle, and I think I'll leave it at that. What the heck does that mean? Ask what's the chat room, a, what's Brian? a frizzle to apparently, the dizzle? Apparently, the chat room is hip on it, Brian. Ryan, so, dude, I, if what I don't, what is this? All right, if you'd like to join the chat room, join the Linux Action Show live. We do it Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific over jupiterbroadcasting.com/slash live. And of course, you can contact this guy over on Twitter. He's twitter.com/slash Brian L. No, Brian Lunduke. Yeah, boy, I, I'm Chris Las. And boy, once I set that, it's just in there. If I changed it, I'd still tell people I'm Chris Las. And I almost you, just said you're Brian Elias. If you want Chris to never ever say words like frizzle again, please comment. No both rules in the says forum. shizzles. Uh, you are Brian Lundizzle. Oh, I like that. Look at Brian Lundizzle. That's a good one. That's not good. If you are upset about this, if this makes you furious, shaking <laughs> with rage, go to youtube.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. Comment there because that's where people go to make rage. Oh, comments. man. Jay Pierce, uh, this is his first time in the live stream. Uh, this is not a good example of what the show's like live. <laughs> you know, it's funny because if you tune in live, you do get like an extra two hours worth of a Linux action show. It's kind of ridiculous. Well, actually, I think this is part of the show right no, now. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. We do kind of lose track at some point, don't we? I don't know what's happening, yeah. really. No, let's wrap so this these, sucker up. These are all great things, is what I'm trying to say. You now know that you get in contact with us over at uh, the Jupiter Colonizzle. Yep. JupiterColony.com. And yeah. you know, I, I had I had a second God. idea. Well, we had a third idea. We got a lot of content for this show, because we were talking about maybe doing the Nego and, and, and 900 thing. And they were like, no, no, we got to do this boxy box review. We got to do it. But you know, the, do you want to know what my third idea was no. for the show? No, I don't want it's to. This might have been. All right, tell me. This might have been too geeky, or I'm, you know, I'm too nerdy, excited or now. whatever. It was going to be a give thanks to your favorite open source developer episode. So, like, I thought we'd go pick like some of our open source uh, favorite projects, and then go find the developer, find their Twitter handle, find that's like a blog, actually. and it's like, yeah, so and so is the developer of this we project, and this is their Twitter handle. This is where they blog at. And so I'm gonna make like I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the game. Do you want to do that next week? Make pictures of my favorite developers with little hearts and ponies and unicorns <laughs> and rainbows <laughs> no, and not. stuff. Totally. Am. But you want we could do that episode next yeah, week let's if you do want. That. All right. Well, if you if there's a if there's an open source project or a developer That's that awesome. you really want to give a shout out to, go over to JupiterColony.com and uh, let's start a thread in there of the developers that you want to give thanks cute. to in the next last. I That's know. That's a cute it's idea. It's like the holiday season and all. And and the thing about open source development is there's actually real people behind it. The great thing is that'll be adorable. And then the week that follows that will be dick and fart jokes yep that's right that was an off the air discussion that's an off the air discussion <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that the live stream got uh you only get that if you're the 216 or whatever viewers we had <laughs> watching the live stream yeah yeah uh, otherwise what you're gonna have to do is hit up chris las on twitter and ask him dizzle what and that's fart jizzles <laughs> 
All right. We're going to call this an end of the show because I'm done with this stuff. All right, everyone. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home. I'm going to I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch an old Rat Pack movie. Nice. I'm going to listen to some Frank Sinatra, maybe some Django Reinhardt. Ooh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cleanse this weird verbal garbage that you're spewing at me off of, off of my body. That must mean that another episode of the Linux Action Show <laughs> is complete. All done. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in to this week's Holy episode moly. of the Linux Action Show. And we'll see you right back here next Sunday. Probably. I'm sorry. Come on. I can't help myself. It's ridiculous. I'm so happy. It's just ridiculous. Chris. Ridiculous. Hey guys. Was, was that the shirt off? I'm going to take, take it up to the 11, 11 is All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> I got one in me before my throat comes out through my mouth. This week on the Linux Action Show! Ah. <laughs>